This is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create this 3D block text using Inkscape. And if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear darkened with these custom icons, a link to that information will be in the description of the video. So before we get started here, I just like to point out that this particular tutorial will only work with uh, Inkscape version 92, which is the latest version. If you don't have version 92, go ahead and upgrade before trying to follow along with this tutorial. Or if you already know how the perspective function works in previous versions, then you can go ahead and use those previous versions. So uh, another thing to point out here is the text I'll be using, the font that I'll be using for this design is, uh, it's called SF Collegiate, I believe. And I will have a link to that information uh, in the description of the video as well. So go ahead and download and install that font before you open up Inkscape. So the first thing we're going to do is set up our documents so that we're all work working on the same page. We want to go to File, Document Properties, and let me bring that window over here. We want to set our display units to pixels, which is PX. And over here where it says border, we can uncheck the box that says Show Page Border and close out of that. And what we want to do now is go to View, and make sure you have custom selected and then we'll zoom in at one to one and then we'll want to open up our line and distribute menu with this which is uh, this button right here and we're going to want last selected chosen from that drop down and then we'll open up the edit objects colors gradients and stroke uh, menu with that button there so the first thing we're going to do is create our text so let's grab the text tool which is right here click on the canvas to get the blinking cursor and i'm just going to write for this tutorial i'm going to write 3d block, oops, 3D block, which is what I wrote here in the thumbnail. So I'm going to change the font now. I'm going to come up here to the text editor, that little T icon, and let me, uh, let me adjust the size here of this window. And I'm going to click on a font that I'm just going to type in. I'm going to start typing in the name of the font, which is SF Collegiate Solid. And that's that right there. Go ahead and click apply and close out of that. And let me grab the uh, scaling tool, maybe in the uh, select tool, so we can scale this up. Just hold control and click and drag one of the corners, one of the corner arrows to scale that up to about that size, a big enough size where you can see it. And then I want to go back to the text tool and move these letters a little closer together because you want the letters to be close together for what we're going to do here. Otherwise, the 3D effect, the dark blue, bluish gray area you're seeing, uh, it doesn't really touch. You want it to be close together and compact so it touches. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the, um, the text tool and right here, uh, spacing between letters, I'm going to hold down that arrow right there to bring the spacing in a little bit. That's a pretty good spacing right there. And if you're working with more than one word, if you notice here, it's two words, 3D and block. I want to bring in that spacing between those two a little bit as well. So I'm going to come up here where it says spacing between words. I'm going to hold that down a little bit as well, just to bring that a little closer. We don't want it to be so close that it looks like it's one word, but we don't want it to be that far apart either. So, uh, okay, maybe that's a little too much. Let me push that back out. And that's pretty good right there. And what we could do is we could take the opacity of this and bring this down about in half. And then we could go to path, object to path. And then we can ungroup it with this button here and unify it all together by going to path, union. And we're going to have to actually bring down the opacity of that again. That's pretty good. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna grab the select tool and I'm gonna take this text right here. I'm gonna right click that and go to copy. And then I'm gonna grab the squares and rectangles tool, which is right here. And I'm just gonna click and drag to create a rectangle. Any size, any shape, it doesn't matter. And I'm gonna make this red. And I'm gonna go to edit, paste size, and paste size. And what that's gonna do is since we copied that text object, it's gonna paste the exact same width and height to this red rectangle as this object is here. So that's pretty useful. So what we're gonna do now is convert this to a path by going to path, object to path. Then we'll go to the select tool, hold shift, click on the 3D block text, and we're going to center it on the vertical and horizontal axis and then click off of it to deselect everything. So what we wanna do now is we're gonna take this box, this red box, and we're gonna make that take the same form that the perspective of the text is going to take. So what we're going to do now is we'll go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool, 
And I'm gonna click this button over here that says show transformation handles for selected nodes. I'm gonna turn that on. That's gonna give us transformation handles. And I'm gonna click and drag over these top two nodes right here. And I'm just gonna hold control and shift and take the, one of these arrows here on the side and just scale that in about that much. And then I wanna take those nodes and bring them down a little bit. So I'll hold control and just click and drag them down a bit. Oops, there's a little bit of a glitch there. That wasn't supposed to happen. Uh, go ahead and if that happens to you as well, go ahead and click undo and try again. We just hit control Z, which is the keyboard shortcut for undo. Let me try it again. Hold control and click and drag that down. And there we go. It's working that time. That's one issue I have with Inkscape version 92. There seems to be a lot of um, bugs and kinks that still need to be worked out. But overall, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty good. So uh, that's a pretty good form right there. We'll leave that just how it is. I'm going to turn that transformation handle icon off. So we don't need that at the moment. Now we'll go back to the select tool and I'm going to take the 3D blocks uh, text and I'm going to raise that to the top. And then I want to go to up here where it says snap to cusp nodes. I'm going to turn that on. And what I want to do now is use the live perspective effect. So to get to that, we'll go to path, path effects. And over here, we're going to click this little button that says plus the, the add path effect icon. And let me make this a little bigger so you can see it. And from this drop-down list, we're gonna look for perspective slash envelope and go ahead and click add. And we're gonna want perspective from that drop-down. And what this does is this is gonna let us alter the perspective of this object in real time. And as opposed to previous versions of Inkscape where you had to have, to, you, had, you had to like draw a box and then, you know, run the extension. This is a lot easier. It's a lot quicker. It's a, it's a much better way. That's one of the things I like about Inkscape version 92 is this live perspective of effect. So uh, to do this, we're going to grab the, uh, the edit paths by nodes tool. And I'm going to take the node up here to the top left and snap this onto the top left of this red corner right here. So I'm just going to take that, click and drag and snap it. And this may, uh, this may cause some slowdown with your computer because this is a bit CPU intensive. I'm going to take this top right node as well. I'm going to bring that over here, snap that on. And there we have it. And we can finalize that by going to path object to path and now we can close out of the path effects window we don't need that and go to the select tool i'm going to take this red object and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that and i'm actually going to click on this text object right here i'm just going to take this top arrow and bring that down a little bit i don't like how tall that was or how high that was vertically i'm going to make it something like that that's pretty good and what we're going to do now is start creating the makeshift 3d effect there so to do that i'm going to right click that object and go to duplicate and I'll make that red. And I want to lower that one step so it goes beneath the black text. And I want to give that a red outline by holding shift and clicking on the color red. And that should put a faint red outline around the outside of it that you can't really see, but we're going to thicken it up right now by going to str the, uh, the stroke style tab. And from this drop down, we want PX for pixels. And I'm just going to start out with maybe 15 and see how that looks. That's actually pretty good. I like how that looks. So I'm gonna leave that just how it is. Uh, that's a pretty good thickness. I'm gonna to go to path, stroke to path, path, break apart. And once you break it apart, you're gonna get all these little pieces right here. Let me hold control and roll up on the mouse wheel to zoom in. And once uh, you'll see, we got all these different pieces. We just need the large pieces on the outside of the red shape. So I'm gonna hold shift and click on this red object, the large red object right there to deselect it. And then I'll hold shift and click on this one as well for this word to deselect that. So all we have left selected are these little red fragments in here. And we can just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. And what we're going to do now is take this red object, hold shift, click on the other red object. And we're going to unify them together by going to path union. And let me zoom out a little bit by holding control and rolling down the mouse wheel. And what we want to do now is duplicate this red object, but instead of right clicking it and going to duplicate, we could just hit control D on the keyboard. And I want to make this one blue and uh, I'll hold control on the keyboard and click and drag this down to here. And I'm just going to hold control and shift and scale this in about that much. Let me move that up a little bit. Yeah, about that much. That's pretty good. And I want to send that to the bottom by clicking the button that says lower selection to the bottom. And let me click off of that to deselect everything and hold control and roll up on the mouse wheel to zoom in a little bit to show you what we're gonna do next. Next, we just gotta go and connect these edges together to create that 3D uh, coming at you type of effect right there. And to do that, we're gonna take like 
Like we're going to take the bottom left corner of the three and connect it together to the bottom left corner of the three on the blue shape. So let me show you. Let me just demonstrate it. We're going to grab the, uh, the Bezier pen, which is right here, or you could press B on the keyboard. And I'm going to snap the cursor onto this corner here and then snap it onto this corner here and then bring it all around through here so it's covering up all of the white space in between and back to the starting point. And I'll go back to the select tool and hold shift and click on the blue object and go to path union. And that should, that's going to be what we're going to do for the rest of these letters here. So let me go back to the Bezier pen, which is right here. Again, just pressing B on the keyboard. I'm going to connect this corner here to the corresponding corner of the red shape. Back to the starting point. And again, we can't forget about the tops of the letters as well. We're going to take this corner here of the blue of the, uh, the red shape and connect it to the corresponding corner of the blue shape. Connect it all together. And again, we're just going to go through and do this on all of the letters. Get the letter B. Uh, the L right here. That's pretty good. For some of them, you won't have to do it because there's already blue area in there. Like for this, like the right side of the D, we don't have to go and draw those shapes in there because the blue area is already there. It doesn't, it wouldn't do anything if we went and draw that. So I'm going to have to close that in as well. Let me take this one here like that um, these should be fine as they are yeah that should be all right as it is well maybe this one here connect it back to there um, can't forget about the O over here up top and uh, the letter K as well And we'll take this part of this letter K here, bring that in like that. Bring that all the way around, back to the starting point. We'll take this far edge over here and connect that all together. Back to the starting point. And what we could do now is we're, up to, we're left with this sloppy mess. Uh, we can go to the, uh, the select tool and hold shift and click on all those shapes that we just drew. So we have them all selected. Let's go ahead while holding shift, go ahead and click on all of them. And with them all selected, we can go to Path, Union. So they're all unified together to be one shape, one object. And then hold Shift and click on the blue shape and go to Path, Union. And let me press one on the keyboard to zoom out to 100%. I'm gonna click and drag over all of this so we have it all selected. Bring the opacity all the way up. And I'm gonna hold Shift and click on the black text to deselect it. So we just have the blue and, and the red shape selected. And we can unify them together by going to Path, Union. And I'll make that black or dark gray. And I'll take the black text and I'll make that white. And that should pretty much do it. That's how you can go and create this 3D block style text using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.